and we're live! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Tuesday. It's, uh, it's a very special Tuesday for me. Not that I backed this particular game on Kickstarter or anything, but I have been very, very much looking forward to when it finally came out, and it's still not out for Linux. Uh, you can buy it for Windows. Hello, Jill! Uh, it, and if you, like a lot of people, bought it because you wanted to play it on Linux or on Mac, well, they do have beta versions currently. Uh, you, if you have the game, you can just ask them for the, uh, the beta repo code and they'll give it to you. And I basically went, alright, I, I can't wait anymore, but take my purchasing of this game as a cautionary tale because shit's buggy, yo. <laughs> Very buggy. So, let's get into a blasphemous, shall we? And uh, let me move that cursor. Not that you could see it, but it, it's there and it was annoying me. Okay, so here we are. The town of Albedo. Or, the town of Tree. That, that's what that translates to. Uh, <laughs> the whole game uh, was developed by the Game Kitchen. Um, and published by Team 17. And once again... Thank you very much, Team17, for supporting Linux in your publishing endeavors. And yeah, the like the whole game and the places that uh, it names, they're all in Spanish. So there's going to be a lot of Spanish and I'm going to fumble my way to translate some of the uh, relevant bits. Or at least try anyway. Anywho, and I'm sure Nori will scream at me from over there if I get something wrong, so it's all good. <laughs> Okay, so, this is the town of Alvedo, and the way the game starts, you're basically dumped into a body of corpses with, um, helmets looking very much like yours. So, yeah, clearly something happened. If you buy the deluxe edition, you actually know what happened, because, uh, well, the miracle happened. <laughs> Linux Nuru, you found that you suck at Bloodstained? Yeah, that seems to be uh, a bit of a thing. Everyone seems to suck at that game. And we can actually... I can actually show you where we start. Mostly because I'm gonna go um, around and go to some of the rooms I haven't been to yet, now that I've unlocked a few more abilities. Uh, because this is very much platforming uh, Metroidvania-style game. <laughs> It, in fact, uh, you replace the penitent one over there with Alucard, and you got yourself um, the sequel to Symphony of the Night. <laughs> okay, and well, th this is... Um, well, we start on that room to the left there, but I've already been there. I've explored everything there is to, and as you can see, there's a pile of dead bodies of people, of people with helmets like mine. The Brotherhood of the Silent Sorrow. Penitent ones that decide to withstand the hardships of the miracle, which was brought about by a lady uh, wanting the miracle to um, pierce her chest and manifest her guilt. And the... well... She was um, granted her wish and her um, guilt was turned into mea culpa the sword <laughs> that our character is using and yeah the the sword basically pierced through her chest and in that comic you can actually see um the penitent one taking the sword and then someone else supposedly from the silent brotherhood actually um comes in and kills him and says well if you are in fact uh, the promised one that will deliver us from the miracle you'll come back to life and wouldn't you know it, we come back to life. And every time we die, we come back to life. <laughs> and combat, yes, it is very much Castlevania E. Enemies are uh, dicks and will take any and all opportunity to lay the smack on you without needing any kind of provocation, they're, they're just happy to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... 
really crap looking VLC. <laughs> there's no color, there's nothing to it. <laughs> Anywho. I think... I think... There is something I want over here. Yes, there is. And that dude with a slit down the middle is trying to kill me. <laughs> okay, yes. I need this item. It's the uh, pelican effigy. And what the pelican effigy does is it's a rosary bead that we can put on our... Well, rosary bead necklace thing. And this one, if we're using it, it protects the wearer from all harm while they drink from the bile flask. The bile flasks are the uh, Estus flasks of this game. And that was a Dark Souls reference, so take a shot. Uh, <laughs> and in fact, I'm willing to excuse you if you don't want to take a shot every time I mention Dark Souls during this stream, because there's going to be a lot of that. Like, a lot of that. <laughs> so... There's something else here, because I remember those vines that extended as I went down the, uh, the elevator there. Uh, those uh, are part of the movement abilities that you unlock. And I'm actually now very much looking... came down here, but I didn't have to. <laughs> now that I'm looking at the map, I actually want to go... Uh, yeah. <laughs> These things are annoying. They don't really do anything. They follow... Uh, they fly in the exact same pattern all the time. They just knock you on your ass if you don't kill them. They don't even deal that much damage. They're just annoying like that. <laughs> And these platforms, of course, are the uh, temporary kind. They will disappear if you so much as look at them the wrong way. Yeah, I need to get up there. Okay. Okay, these shouldn't disappear. These two do, which means I need to kill this one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now, these enemies are the easiest ones. Even uh, right as you start the game, they die in one hit. They're really nothing to be afraid of. They're just annoying because, yeah. They're flying, and yeah, they're flying, in this case, uh, right above a pit of spikes. And it is a platformer, so you drop into spikes, you're insta-dead. <laughs> he says as he immediately drops into spikes. <laughs> or close to. And uh, this guy ringing the bell is an asshole and uh, sending shockwaves across those other bells or resonance chambers, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and... Mm. Uh, there, th th there is something I'm missing here. Or maybe it's not here. It's further to the right in the other area, I think. Forgot you could just use Discord to chat. Yes, and uh, no matter where you are, there it is. There's the finds that I was looking for. I missed the timing. <laughs> now I gotta ride this elevator again. And nope, I missed it again. Don't care this time. <laughs> and... Oh, I see. I see how this was made more difficult <laughs> than it needed to be. <laughs> I need to come in from the right. <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> At least those things time out and give me enough time to get there. Ah. The Solea of Excommunication. I have no idea what Solea means. Probably something to do with sunlight, or just light in general. Um, for a while, the quick attacks of the Penitent One are replaced with a devastating blow that annihilates enemies. Okay, so it's a buff. Kind of like uh, the Seguidia to your eyes like the stars. 
the Zarabanda <laughs> of the safe haven and the Taranto for my sister and Lorikiana Veridialish of the forsaken hamlet yeah <laughs> Everything is Spanish. Everything is um, heavily influenced by religion, or at least religious iconography. Ow. <laughs> and I did say that the game was buggy, and it is very, very buggy. Uh, you haven't uh, realized it yet, because it actually seems to be running as intended. Now, yep, yeah, basically, Spanish Inquisition the game. Uh, <laughs> The the problem is when I visit, say, the NPC that increases my maximum health. I visit that NPC. Actually, this uh, area here is um, a boss battle. If you um, and you only get one chance to defeat this particular boss once, because the moment um, you either defeat her or you die, well, she doesn't appear here again. Basically, it's just here so you have the tree with the embers that you can put things, but we have no available offerings. In fact, one of the offerings we had was the egg of Altas Gracias. Um, the high thanks or high graces, I guess that would translate to. Okay. And yes, she gives us uh, her egg because, well, she can't really, um, or she doesn't want to do what is necessary to um, bring the uh, the egg because, well, she has her reasons and I'm not going to spoil it because it is a little teeny tiny bit of the story. Or as much as this game has story, anyway. And and yes, there is a lot of lore here, but the story is threadbare. <laughs> the jalapenos to your reverend Flatlands, yes. <laughs> that would be <laughs> very good name for a spell. <laughs> FX boy. Hey there, Shay. <laughs> uh, actually, um, speaking of uh, Altas Gracias, let's go see the place where she um, was, because she's not there anymore. After we uh, put her egg in the embers, it hatches, and um, we actually get that ability that makes the vines come down so we can get to places we can before and that bit uh that item you saw up there well that requires an ability that i don't have yet which is the ability to drop um like pits that would kill you basically oh yeah uh, actually the this area right here is um the one, uh, it's after the Tres Angustias boss, which is, uh, or literally translated it as the uh, Three Anguishes. And they're somehow related to Altas Gracias, but that's neither here nor there. This room, in specific, there's supposed to be an NPC here, that uh, NPC I mentioned earlier, that increases your health. She um, goes around bare-chested with like six swords uh, buried in her chest and one buried uh, in her hand. And uh, doesn't really have a name, she just says that she bears the six stinging pains, the swords, and you get, you removed one of her pains and you increase your HP. But she didn't spawn after this boss fight. She just didn't. So, yeah. I didn't know she was supposed to spawn here. It wasn't until I actually went to uh, looking around. It's like, why is there an empty room after the boss battle? Was there supposed to be something there? Yes, there was. And it didn't spawn. The game kitchen. I hope you guys are watching right now. Because <laughs> that, that, that needs... Um, 
that needs fixing. And then when I found her again, oh, the, here they are. The, the, um, the three anguishes. Of course, uh, this particular boss room actually involved me climbing platforms and doing wall jumps and smacking them as I was going because there was fire coming um, coming from the bottom and it 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 was actually a reasonably uh, difficult boss fight in fact from someone who likes to play Dark Souls take a shot um, this game makes Dark Souls look forgiving like very forgiving <laughs> This game does not give a damn. And, uh, ooh, yes. I do need to be here as well, apparently, because... These vines... Help me get to the Child of the Moonlight. I've already released 23 of them, but I need a total of 38. So, 15 more. And this... Let's see... Ah, there we go. Okay. It's just the egg made out of hair that's left and these are the three offerings that I had to leave for Altas Gracias and um, she left us uh, a knot of her hair um, wow we're all full up on uh, beads we still need three more rosary knots to fully upgrade my uh, necklace but all right and this one, it's a tangle of hair knotted with the strength of three broken bonds. Oh, that's a bit of a spoiler. Uh, a strong knot allows it to be used as a rosary bead, carrying carrying part of its unyielding strength to the wearer. Okay, so it makes it stronger. So that means I want to use it like that. There we go. <laughs> I'll take it. I don't trust knots. And that, that's a knot of hair. <laughs> and we're using it as a rosary bead. <laughs> yeah. Everything about this game is uh, body horror and other other nasty stuff. And it's great. And I love it. And I knew I loved it. From uh, when I saw after they successfully finished their Kickstarter. And I saw the... Um, the trailer for the game. It's like, holy crap, I want to play that. <laughs> I want to play that so bad. It, it looks like it could be very Castlevania-y. It looks like it has like all the um, gore and gruesome stuff that uh, sort of kind of pushed me more towards Dark Souls. And it's, and it's hard, as it turns out. Um, I'm nine hours in, ten hours in-ish. The game hasn't stopped being hard. In fact, it's been made harder because you're expected to have a bit more health when you get to where I've gotten to. But I can't get any more health, otherwise the game will just freeze and I won't be able to move. I mean, the game won't even take um, some pixel Dark Souls type business. And you've already found the largest sword. Yeah, you already start the game with the largest sword. <laughs> but yeah, um... The, the game straight up locks up and doesn't let me do anything. And these guys, they don't really um, exist. They're summoned by a certain bell ringer that's on the other side of the room, but I don't have a reason to go there right now. I found the two items that I was looking for in uh, John Doe. John Doe is interesting because it's a bell that was built uh, upside down so that when uh, it told it could be heard all across the world I'm not entirely sure how the physics of this world allow for that but then again this is a world where uh, if you ask the powers that be for punishment you get it in spades and then the rest of the world pays for it uh, it's uh, yeah so eh. Magic. <laughs> FX boy, you're still going at it. Oh yes, and these guys and uh, gals uh, who are tending to the wounds. Um, well, uh, that one there isn't so much as tending to the wounds as she's uh, sucking face 
to the wounds, as is that guy. Uh, as is that one, and as is that one. And if you talk to the fine fella at the back there that's tending to the wound in that uh, person's knee, he actually uh, says the first time that they are the kissers of wounds. That 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 that's the name of their ecclesiastic order. The miracle is taking. <laughs> and the miracle is taking them. So the kissers of wounds. <laughs> okay, so let's take another elevator. And uh, this elevator is basically what indicates that this is either a video game or th uh, the town of Tree is underground. One or the other. Um, let's see. Graveyard of the Peaks. Yes, there is that area there that I haven't been to. You can see that there is no wall on the top. So, I'm gonna have to go there. I think I've explored everything here. There's this area that seems to have like a door on the ceiling there but I've been to that room many times because of just that visual indication on the map but I can't see anything there so maybe it's something that's uh, a bit broken oh yeah so I suppose I can show you the uh, the lady of with the six stinging pains she's um, where is she oh yes up here she is right here and uh, it was because of this kind of imagery that I uh, was very happy that Ven enabled the uh, you must be over 18 to be watching this stream okay <laughs> and yeah the, the lady with the six stinging pains um, and <laughs> it was also part of the reason that I had to look up the twitch guidelines as to whether or not I could actually stream this game on Twitch. Thankfully, uh, they not only uh, not disallow it, as I saw a bunch of people streaming it, so cool. That, 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 that's cool. Please don't ban us Twitch. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm going up. I didn't, I shouldn't be going up, should I? Uh, actually, I should. That'll make my job a little bit easier of getting that place. <laughs> well, uh, a lot of people in the world ended up doing it for free. Not because they wanted to, but because when the miracle um, manifests, everyone is uh, hit by it. They don't really get much of a choice in the matter. <laughs> I mean, this is Twitch. <laughs> Ooh, that came very close. And uh, those enemies, those actually deal a lot of damage if you get hit by that stupid um, thing. Uh, I don't even know what, what it is that they're carrying, but there's clearly a person or something inside that um, brazier. I don't know, it's just... It's <laughs> Ooh, okay, I'm glad that was there, because <laughs> I almost died. <laughs> uh, okay, not this one. I need to go down one... Yes, one more. Okay, how about you two follow me so I can come here and kick your ass? I don't want to talk to you, wall dude. In fact, you know what, wall dude? Um, um, I have a spell for you. Let me show you one of my spells. The very first spell you get, actually. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> Basically, that spell just follows along uh, the floor and the, the ceiling of whatever it touches. <laughs> and... The king carrying his own coffin? I suppose. Anywho, I need to go here. Yes. The platforms that form from blood and the wind that blows me off of them. Oh, you need to use the wind again. Okay, yes. This uh, whole 
area is all about uh, riding the wind. Mm. Couldn't have let me walk out of that one without any damage, could you guys? Ginormous. Oh, Tentudius Skeletal Remains. I do believe this is the last item I need for that particular quest, so you get to join me on that one. Um, but in order to get that, I need to get back to the elevator. Which is up here. I mean, I suppose I could go, like, down here. Mad leaping skills. Eh. <laughs> They're not uh, anything spectacular, because as you uh, play the game, you kind of have to master them, otherwise you're just going to die. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. So I can go down and catch the, hele the elevator halfway down the shaft. And I realize the more I talk, the more innuendos come out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm not doing it on purpose, I swear. <laughs> and I see an item over there. Do I need to ride the wind? Yes, yes I do. <laughs> oh, it's an empty bile vessel. And uh, if you're wondering what those are, well, the, those are the things that you need to get the healing potion slash estus flask slash whatever you want to call them okay so now we wait for the wind to blow the other way which is now and i'll you because if you drop down that pit it's certain death yes <laughs> ah yes the blood platforms actually since we're here i might actually go Oh, uh, there's a child of the moonlight up here. How do I get to you? Because there's nothing up there. This is a very not good place to be standing in because the wind keeps blowing me off to the sides. Right. I want that spell that brings uh, lightning from the heavens. Taranto to my sister. There we go. And we cast a spell. There we go. <laughs> we have freed the little child of the moonlight. Okay. And I suppose we do have to get past that NPC. There's no way around that. Okay. Fine, so be it. So be it! <laughs> well, that is the uh, the spell of perhaps the hardest boss fight I've ever had uh, in this game. Which is uh, Ezra's of the Anointed Legion, and I'm dead. <laughs> Just like that. Uh, yeah. Ezra's of the Anointed... Oh, wow, I'm down here? Uh, okay, fine, whatever. Um, Ezra's of the Anointed Legion uh, is the, thus far, the hardest boss fight I've seen. Because not only um, is he actually a very hard uh, boss uh, all on his own, when he gets down to like quarter health, his sister, Perpetua, joins him. Because they're both dicks. <laughs> and it's like, oh, what's that? You were having a fair fight and the penitent one uh, player character was winning. Eh, I can't have that. Let's have a flying angel that throws lightning at you from the ground that you can barely keep an eye on with everything that's already happening in the goddamn boss fight. So, yeah, that that, that wasn't pretty. That, that, that particular boss fight was not pretty. <laughs> So yeah, actually the fight with uh, with Ezra's is um, one uh, of the ones that they keep uh, taunting. 
during uh, like the start of the game you see it like two or three times as you make your way to new places he shows up behind you it's like yeah our fight is coming yeah our fight is coming it's like all right okay chill <laughs> right okay so i suppose we can take the elevator to go and get back some of our guilt because as you can see if you look at the top left there above the um well since the camera doesn't move here right here this bit um in the uh sort of looking mana bar that's your guilt bar and that's what allows you to cast spells so it it is mana it's just they call it guilt because everything here is guilt everything here is punishment everything here is uh religious in theme at least <laughs> ooh Jordan <laughs> there's shade uh, being thrown at you <laughs> uh, I wanted to go and fill my <laughs> no you know what screw that screw my guilt I'll refill my um, jar of bile Somewhere else, I'll just uh, pay this statue to get rid of my guilt. Thank you, statue. My guilt has ex uh, has been expiated. Okay. So, with all this, I've basically been meandering to save time because this is the bit where I'm right now. I could also be uh, exploring this particular area right here. I know for a fact that I can at least get this bit uh, explored. I don't know about these others, uh, but yeah. This area, the Sleeping Canvases, as the name would imply, has some very familiar looking enemies, which, you know what, screw it, let's go. <laughs> I'll just show you. I'll make my way over there and I'll show you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay, and uh, these statues are the ones that uh, upgrade uh, Mea Culpa, the sword. And as you can see, I have everything. Mostly because I've been taking the time to go back and explore every little bit, uh, every little uh, nook and cranny that I've come across. <laughs> I'm fighting very hard not to make that joke right now, so. <laughs> okay, Nori just got the joke too. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I said earlier, everything I'm saying right now sounds like an innuendo, not necessarily, eh, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, I do know that there's a hidden um, path here, but I have no idea how to unlock it. Maybe I need to kill a boss fight thing. But before I can get to that boss fight, I need to get through this area, which is the Library of Negated Words. Because of course it is. <laughs> and that enemy um, has no head, and um, it sends its head, or heads, uh, floating towards us to damage us and uh, just be dicks. And I got distracted trying to hit the head and uh, forgot to catch the thing. All right. I do need to get that letter on the way. There we go. God damn it. <laughs> Dodging that book is always a pain in the ass. Always a pain in the ass. In fact, um... I have uh, grown very, very tired of those book throwers. Like, very, very tired. <laughs> okay, you know what? You die. <laughs> Alright. No more floating heads in this room. And yes, much like, you know, your Dark Souls, whenever you use the uh, bonfire shrine 
Deus Volt, whatever that thing is called, um, uh, it's the enemies respawn because this is that kind of game, <laughs> and uh, that's the um, the key keeper for the library. And uh, he had a quest for me. He asked me to uh, stop a noise that was happening. And uh, yes, the game actually does play a very good job, or does do a very good job of playing with sound. And yeah, you can actually tell exactly where uh, that um, particular quest takes place by paying attention to have I been to that platform? I honestly can't remember. Okay, throw your goddamn book. <laughs> ah, do it again. That's the thing you can do to stop the book from dealing damage to you, but it's a pain. It is such a pain. Anywho, uh, okay. What does this lever do? I don't remember. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. No, go back. Oh god, I broke it. Okay. <laughs> I unbroke it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and this is usually the point where I die, so... Because these ghosts that are reading the books also deal damage. And, uh, of course, the guys that are using their books as shurikens, of course they deal damage. Because that's all they have left in life. They're, they've resigned um, themselves to the fact that they are ginormous dicks. <laughs> and they just do that. That's all they do. I'm just going to spam the potions because... Uh, if I get the chance, I'll make a stop at either that particular altar or that particular fountain of uh, blood to refill the uh, the jars. Actually, I do need to go to the fountain to refill the jars. Come on. Of course, there was a book behind me. <laughs> right, you throw the book. Take that book and shove it in your poop hole. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> Did you see how much damage that book dealt? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Yeah. If you think Dark Souls is hard, you're not going to enjoy this game. <laughs> At all. Alright, throw your goddamn book. <laughs> I can I can't. I just can't. <laughs> okay. One more. <laughs> One more. <laughs> I need to hit the lever on the way. There we go. It's actually much harder to do in that particular platform because it's moving forwards and that thing still managed to deal damage to me. So fuck's sake. Everything wants me dead. But then again, this is this game, so... Yeah. Okay, I guess we're stopping at the um, thing here to recover our jars just because you kind of have to. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like a uh, third time was the charm. And, see those two? Yeah. If I have the chance, I'm not going to tango with them. I'm just gonna run right past them. Uh, refill empty biliary vessel in exchange for 1850, 1850 um, tiers of something. <laughs> what are they called? I, I can't remember. The tiers, tiers, um... Tears of Atonement? Because, oh crap, I, I was in town and I forgot to give this one to the thing. Oh well. 
too late to go back now. <laughs> okay, I guess we're not uh, running past it. We're uh, getting hit by it and um, knocked on our ass on the way down. And you are too big and have way too much HP to be worth my time. And you don't really do anything for me anymore, so yeah. Yes, that is an actual dead body that that particular enemy was swinging around as its weapon. <laughs> Imagery. <laughs> ah, yes. The explodey heads. Oh, that's right. There's a platform there. I can't sh shoot the, uh, the blood thing. Yes. And that explosion deals a ton of damage. Because, of course, it does. <laughs> okay. We're almost where I want to go. Almost. Well, I don't want to go there. That's why I was on the other side of the map when we first started the stream. Because I, yeah, I, I'm basically looking for anything and everything I can do that doesn't involve... Ah, oh, there we go. The sleeping canvases. Uh, that doesn't involve fighting bosses because I can't get my HP upgrades. Now, I know there's someone out there right now going, uh, you, you noob get good and um, just play the game without any um, HP updates I'm not that good I, I'm not <laughs> I mean you've been watching me play I'm not and look it's a painting that comes from the wall and it's got a sword and attacks us and that's like a bronze golem of some description and if you hit them once they kind of go into that state and yeah that wasn't the spell I thought I had equipped <laughs> and that uh, particular mace of that particular statue that's carrying its coffin around its back uh, is a one-hit KO basically like I said basically <laughs> that was like half my HP just gone <laughs> little love tap that that thing gave me. Okay. So, uh, where do we want to go? Just right. Okay. Something um, tells me that there's a secret room to the right uh, there, but I was there and I didn't see it. So, let's go have a look. Yeah, there is something behind that wall. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell that there's something behind that wall. Okay. I have put out two of these blue candles. I've put out one of these red candles, and I have no idea what this means. In fact, um, if we look at my uh, rosary beads, you can see that I have the big bead of blue wax from putting out two candles and the medium bead of red wax from only putting out the one. So, that's all I got. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> yeah, glory kills are fun. And they're not just fun, uh, they're also very useful because they give you invincibility frames while the, uh, the glory kill is happening. So you can abuse the poop out of those glory kills. Oh yes, you can't duck there. Okay. But I can duck here and then move and then I should have moved! There we go. <laughs> it's a video game! <laughs> <laughs> and if I wanted to um, make another Dark Souls reference, it sends Fortress. Might as well be. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> and of course, the painting kills me. <clears throat> See what I mean by not having HP upgrades? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Goodbye. <laughs> I keep forgetting I can do that. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, it's more than half. <laughs> I hadn't taken damage yet. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of HP. <laughs> Uh, if only it was the impatience, <laughs> because I managed to do okay in Dark Souls, and yet this game is kicking my ass. Well, at first I thought, you know, eh, this game is easy, I don't know what the hell people are talking about. Little did I know. And there's my guilt. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, round two. <laughs> this time, with that thing that will actually just straight up kill you if you're given half a chance. <laughs> and those things are hard enough to kill on their own. Let alone with uh, those bronze golems. Of course. Please let me get up there. <laughs> okay. While we're hanging, we don't get hit, so abuse that. It's all in timing. Problem is, I didn't start. <sighs> Ooh. Didn't start out with the best of timings, so yeah. <laughs> I wasn't a Dark Souls whisperer, but uh, I struggled to see why people were having so much issue with, with it and saying, "Oh, this game is so very hard." It's like um, I'm pretty sure Alex Kidd on uh, the Master System was harder, like way freaking harder. <laughs> And uh, this painting, you can actually uh, you have talk some of my brothers. to the bull. And the bull says, I have found some of his brothers. Though I still ask you to find the rest of them, please keep this canvas made from the gold of our faces, and the brothers will guide you. We got a golden frame. Penitent one. Oh, the bull had a big uh, child of the moonlight on the inside. Hello. My name, being Hosinero. I was born of the moon and of the torment of a brave bull, and of myself, by the grace of high wills, my holy brethren. Yeah, you were born of the bull. Did you need to split it in twain to come back out? Okay. Cool. <laughs> well, I did not know you you got to experience that with me. That 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 was a thing. Awesome. <laughs> the children of the moonlight are badass. <laughs> okay. I always thought it was a bit weird, because it's like, yeah, it's just like little cherubs. They're held in glass prisons, and you rescue them. It's like, that that seems very video gamey. And then it's like, you have a bull in a painting that's surrounded by those children, and he is asking you to release those children. And as it turns out, the bull is a child. It's massive. <laughs> was apparently born from... <laughs> uh, yeah, that, 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 that's funny. Okay. Speaking of funny, let me show you a boss fight. And if you recognize this particular um, arena, that's because you saw the same trailer I did.
Esposito, Scion of Abjuration. <laughs> Esposito. <laughs> no, stay away from me. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Seriously, this snake, it deals so much damage. <laughs> This is why I want more HP, and I can't have it. <laughs> okay, that's not fair. I can't see the attacks coming from the bottom of the goddamn screen. <laughs> and, of course, uh, the, the tail deals contact damage, so... I'm going to die. <laughs> God damn it. Please let me heal. Thank you. <laughs> um, and you see the damage I haven't dealt to this particular boss because I can't even get anywhere near it. And it keeps moving. <laughs> and I'm out of healing potions. And it deals contact damage. Please, please, just kill me already. <laughs> and yes, that is the controller rumbling. <laughs> because if Esposito gets to you, he tears you limb from limb. <sighs> and yeah, actually, it was that boss fight. It's like I saw that. It's like. They get away with that? Seriously? <laughs> and, um. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, <laughs> that boss fight was, uh, or the trailer for that boss fight was a, a, enough to sell me on the idea of this game, and the gameplay, it very much delivers, however, it's buggy, it's so very buggy, I mean, yes, it is hard, and I will find a way to beat that boss, there's gotta be a way to do it, I just haven't figured it out. And since I don't have that much HP, I die in like three hits. So, yeah. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. Bestowed as a gift from the firstborn, it allows the penitent one to descend into bottomless abysses. There we go. There's the, um, the item I was talking about. <clears throat> That's how you get that particular item. Um... I think that is just one, uh, that just leaves one that I need to get all the ones that I need to basically go and explore the whole map, I think. I may be wrong. And this bit, I just need to hand it to the guy in town. These are the hearts of, um, Mea Culpa. Basically, uh, you can put a heart into the sword, but it's got an advantage and a disadvantage. Like, for example, this one this is the first one you get, and it boosts the blocking stand, increasing its duration, but exp exposes the penitent one longer to enemy attacks, which means the block cooldown is increased. So, you can't do the parry as often. The, um... The Heart of the Holy Purge, it increases the Tears of Atonement. Yes, the Tears of Atonement, that is the currency. Um, increases the amount of tears that you get, but prevents the use of Bile Flask. So basically, you get more money, but you don't get the healing potions. Kind of a big trade-off. Can be inserted into Mea Culpa, reduces the duration. Mea Culpa, for those of you who don't know, is my fault or my blame my guilt because it's that kind of game Duh. Um, can be inserted reduces the duration of uh, the stop 
but eases, uh, eases the execution of a righteous repast. I have no idea what that is, so I never used it. Uh, the Heart of Saltpeter Blood. Attack damage is increased when the Penitent One is close to death. That That's all it does. And in fact, uh, to get this... Um, this um, particular heart, I had to deal damage to myself. How do you de deal damage to yourself? You hold down Y, or triangle, and that's it. You bless your sword with your own blood, dealing damage to yourself for not much of anything. Yeah, the, I'm not entirely sure if this ability is solely for that particular thing to un unlock that particular uh, gate, but yeah. And this one, the Heart of Cerulean Incense. Regrettably, the mist affects either of you. Uh, <laughs> sword core that shines surrounded by a clear blue mist emanating from small creases. Its scents mix well with the smell of shed blood, increasing fervor generation. Regrettably, the mist affects purity, weakening attacks based on blood. So yeah, my um, ranged attack here, my blood tiara, is uh, very much weakened if I use that particular sword core. But I get more fervor, which is the guilt. Um, well, the guilt is the like the thorns around the um, the fervor bar. It's complicated. <laughs> But yeah, it, then you have the spells, the upgrades for the sword, bones, because your uh, character is a bit of a klepto, because he's the main character of a video game, so of course he is. Uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, you basically have, you collect the bones of people long dead, fam uh, famous people long dead, and uh, you... Those bones actually all represent each of the um, Kickstarter backers, I think, because each of the Kickstarter backers that paid above a certain tier uh, got to like place a world in the item with their name on it. That's what those are, and you get to display them uh, in uh, like bone chapel that's underneath uh, the city of uh, Albedo. So yeah all of this because I'm trying to burn time because I don't want to go back into that boss fight and die again. <laughs> because it's just that hard. Okay. One more go. Just the one. And I kind of like the, the boss fight music. There. There is our guilt. Stay the hell away from me. <laughs> okay, I dodged one, but I didn't see the other. How the hell was I supposed to do that? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Okay, so thing only appears if I get close to it. Like that. So if I stay back here, I get no tail. No, I take that back. I do get the tail. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have the timing now. <laughs> you know what? Do your thing. <laughs> That's what happens. <sighs> so yes. As much as I like this game and I want to say, please go out and buy it, don't. Just don't. 
it it's it's uh it's buggy i can't get um more hp without the game just completely locking me out uh, locking me out of all input uh they are working on it uh i know for a fact that other people have run into this very same issue so I at least have that to look forward to uh and they do say uh team 17 said that the game would be out maybe like uh, at the end of 2019 there wasn't a definite anything into what they said so yeah it'll be out on linux this is the native linux version that i'm playing right now but it is in beta very much <laughs> Oh yeah, I suppose it does. <laughs> Alright, let's go look at the uh, the picture of the bull now that we know that that bull is pretty badass. And uh, with that, I shall take my leave for uh, another week of uh, We Suck at Playing Video Games. I hope I sucked just enough to keep you entertained and I managed to uh, show you a little bit of Blasphemous. And I really, really, really do hope that the game, uh, the game kitchen and um, Team 17 work out the bugs by the time that the game is officially released on Linux, because I like this game. I really do. So, good job. But, yeah. Fix this stuff. Fix the bugs. And uh, with that, I shall see you tomorrow for Linux Weekly of the Wednesdays. Jordan will be back on Thursday with uh, his own thing. And of course, uh, on Friday, Ven will uh, do the Friday Night Foobar. Whatever th that happens to be this particular week. And of course, on Saturday, we have Linux Gamecast Weekly. Join us then, because that's the big show. The Linux Gaming Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That, uh... That's me. I'm Pedro Mateus. You can find me at unaccounted4 on Twitter, and that, that, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to check out LinuxGameCast.com, and all the ways you can support us are described on the navbar. So, thank you all very much for joining me, and stick around, because there's a whole week of fun ahead of us. Bye bye